So far, we have been looking at the immediate uh, reward case, right? The bandit uh, bandit setting. So that made made life a little easy for us. And uh, now we want to look at the full problem, the full RL problem, where in some sense we have. Let's assume uh, to begin with that we have uh, an episodic case, right? So the uh, the episode runs for some non-deterministic number of time, right? And uh, so what we are going to do is uh, uh, we are going to come up with uh, a version of this policy gradient approach that works for this full reinforcement learning problem, right? So I'm kind of making it making the development a little simpler. I could have started off with what we did earlier to give you the intuition as to how this policy gradient thing works with the bandits and then gone from there, right? But that development is a little bit more cumbersome. So what we will do today is introduce you to the policy gradient theorem. Right? It's a specific, very, very simple but deep result. Uh, that allows you to do policy gradient uh, updates for the full reinforcement learning problem in a very very efficient manner right and uh, and so so that's something that we are going to look at so there are many ways in which you can formulate this i am going to take this one uh, setting right so i'm going to look at uh, the case where we have a single starting state right so I'll call it s not right it's always it's like the board games right tic tac toe will always start in one way or backgammon or chess all of these will start only in one particular position. So think of it that way, right? I'm going to assume that we're going to start in a single state, right? And my J theta, remember we said that the expected value of the rewards or uh, for the bandit case, right? The J theta is going to be the value function, right? The value of the start state S naught, value of the start state S naught under the policy pi theta, right? So theta fixing theta is going to give me a policy pi theta. So under that policy pi theta, what is the value of the start state f naught? Okay, so that is going to be my performance metric for theta, and this performance metric is what I am going to do gradient ascent on to figure out what is the best settings for theta. Right. So now instead of thinking of the value function for every state, right, I kind of rolled it down into just the value function of the start state. Right. Okay. So hope that is clear. And if you think that this is a pretty restrictive formulation that I always have to start from the same state, uh, we can kind of get around that, right? So you can, so whatever be your MDP, right? Let's say that there is some MDP in which every state you can start, right? There is some probability in which you can start in every state, right? As a uniform probability, you can start in every state. So what you do is you introduce a dummy state called S naught, where you always start, right? And regardless of what you do from S naught, right? There is some probability of some uniform probability of going to any state in the grid world. All right. After the first action, you will uniformly transition to any state in the grid world. Therefore, all I am interested in looking at is the value of the first state S not. Right. Way of getting around it. Uh, uh, so, so it's not as restrictive as you think uh, it might be. Right. It's it's. Uh, but I, I'm not going to get into that again. So I'll just assume that you have that in the back of your mind, and we, from now on we'll talk about having a single start state S not right. It doesn't really matter. Right? Uh, so the policy gradient theorem states the following, right? So the gradient of the performance, right, J theta, right, the gradient of J theta can be expressed as follows, right? J theta is proportional to, right, some weighting function mu s right where mu s is the amount of uh, 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 you know influence that state s is going to have on the final uh, uh, gradient right this literally is uh, basically the fraction of time uh, that if i am following policy pi theta the fraction of time i am going to spend in state s right as as t tends to infinity right what fraction of time will i spend in state s Right, so that basically is my mu of s. So it's 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 kind of this uh, uh, weighting function. You can uh, that will uh, you can think of it like a like a steady state distribution, if you will. Uh, but since we are talking about episodic tasks, uh, notion of steady state distribution doesn't make sense. So if I'm if I if I run this uh, thing for an indefinite number of time, so what fraction of time steps uh, will I visit state s? Okay, that's what mu of s is. Right. Times. <coughs> summation over a q pi s a into gradient of pi right with respect to 
pi pi of a given s right remember earlier we were talking about pi of a now it's pi of a given s with the parameters theta so this is basically the prob the the uh, the probability that you get for uh, uh, for action a when your parameters are theta so this is basically the policy specified by the current setting of uh, the parameters theta okay so that is basically what the policy gradient theorem says. So, client tech, something really off, right? Because your q pi is going to depend on theta. Right? You, you, after having seen semi gradient method, this might not be that much of a shocker to you that in reinforcement learning we do not take the derivative of half the things that depend on theta. Uh, but still, it is it's, 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 it's actually a, a very cool result. When it came out, I know it, it was like mind blowing for me. It, is, it came uh, like uh, like ninety nine or two thousand one, right? So around that time, uh, so two people came up with it almost uh, independently. So uh, so mu again, right? It's a it's a fraction of times you are going to be in state s if you are following policy pi theta, right? And q pi s a is the is the q value for following policy pi theta. So all of these quantities are actually dependent on theta. Right, but then when I'm saying I'm taking the gradient with respect to uh, 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 theta of j theta, so all of these are actually outside the derivative, and all I'm taking the derivative of is the actual probability of uh, picking the action. Right, so this is a very uh, 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 interesting thing. There's this guy Marbach, right, who came up with this initially. It's part of his PhD thesis. And it was like a 10 12 page uh, uh, proof, right? It's a fairly involved uh, proof uh, where he built up uh, to this uh, theorem. So, Marbach and uh, Sitsiklis, right? So, they came up with this uh, policy gradient theorem. Uh, but independently, there was a group of researchers uh, with uh, Rich Sutton and uh, uh, others who also came up with a policy gradient theorem and they had like a half a page proof. Right. So, it is like mind blowing this guys this guys did something that was you know uh, several pages long and these guys come and say oh let me let me do something very weird right I finally get you the proof but uh, you know I will start from somewhere in the middle right and both the left hand side and the right hand side do not look like what I want but I will eventually bring them to <laughs> where I want the derivative to be right it is like a uh, very nice way of doing it. So, that is uh, that is a half page proof from uh, uh, mostly done by the Chatham like amazing stuff anyway so what we will do now is quickly walk through the uh, Sutton uh, and others uh, uh, policy gradient proof and this is discussed in the textbook right so if you want a reference you can actually go and look at that right uh, so the the cool thing with the policy gradient theorem is that it gives you this uh, analytical expression so you can uh, uh, you know uh, easily compute the gradient so we will come back and look at how you can compute the gradient there are many 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 ways in which you can compute this gradient uh, of, of the policy parameters uh, and we will figure out how to do that, right. But just quickly walking through the proof, it is actually a very simple proof in, in some sense. So, if you remember the, your expression for v pi of s, right, your v pi of s can be written as summation over a pi of a given s into q pi s comma a, right. So, this is just the normal uh, uh, state value function uh, written in terms of the expected uh, action value function for some arbitrary policy pi. I mean, we are not even talking about optimal policy. Right? We, we have to find the gradient uh, for some policy pi, right? And this this expression is true for all states. Yes. Right? Now let's try and uh, you know take the derivative of this expression. So the derivative of this expression is uh, you know using the u um, u dv v d u rule, right? So this is the gradient of pi times q pi plus pi times gradient of q pi, right? So that's basically the the product rule for the derivatives right now let us go back and so the gradient of pi into q pi so this is what we want right remember so we want q pi into gradient of pi right so this is what we want so we are not going to touch that part of this we will keep that right but the other one we do not like so we, we have to make it we have to make it go away right so now what we do is we keep this pi as it is so the gradient so q pi I expand in terms of v pi I can do that right. So, we started off by writing v pi in terms of q pi. So, v pi in terms of q pi. Now, I am going to expand q pi in terms of v pi 
in this other part right so now q pi is going to be written in terms of v pi so as you know this is can be written as some a is fixed right pi pi a is not going to come in here because a is fixed and so that is s prime uh, summation over all s prime r p s prime r given s comma a times r plus v pi s prime that is good. I am not going to expand v pi s prime in terms of q pi and write it write the pi here because I can now move this v pi to the other side and start simplifying the expression. So, that is basically what we are going to do right. So, expanding the same thing here. So, it is nothing I have just written it out again right. So, originally this was q pi right I have, uh, q pi s comma a I have written it out as uh, in terms of v pi. Now, what I can do is I can further unroll the whole thing right. So, what I have I have this expression which I am not touching. So, this part is fine. So, this gradient right of uh, so, what I have done from the previous slide to this one is the gradient has gone inside because this is a parameter of the problem right. This p is a parameter of the problem. So, the gradient of p of this plus that and all that is basically this right because r is also a, a parameter of the problem. So, the gradient of r times p s prime r is all goes to 0 right. So, I can ignore that. So, I just have gradient of v pi left right the r part goes away. So, I will now expand this gradient right. That is that is that expression written off. So, what happens here? So, that is uh, 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 a prime s prime q pi s prime comma a prime and summing over all possible actions I can take right and uh, same thing right. So, gradient of the policy times q plus pi times the gradient of the q which again gets written out like this right. You can see I, I kind of skipped two steps here. So, I should have written it like this right. So, the gradient now is going to become the gradient of pi times q pi uh, plus pi times gradient of q pi right. So, the pi times gradient of q pi we know simplifies into this expression right. The gradient of q pi got simplified into this expression. So, likewise it gets simplified into this expression right and I can keep unrolling this all, all the way out until I reach uh, you know uh, the end. at the end when I reach the end what is going to happen the value of the terminal state is going to be 0. So, I do not have to worry about the value of the terminal state. So, I will basically uh, I will end up okay summation over a right uh, this expression right summation over a this expression and and uh, so basically what is the probability that I will reach this state x whenever I started from state s right and I kept taking more and more and more steps right. So, basically that is that is that is uh, uh, that is rolling it out and, and rearranging the summation There's a little little bit of a bookkeeping done here. So, if you can think about it right. So, every time I roll out right I just have this uh, uh, this one summation that goes here for each state right. Uh, 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 um, right. So, every time I roll out this looking at it this way right every time I roll out I am going to get this right. So, summation uh, uh, so that is this term a of s q pi s a right I will reach this and now I have reached this summation in one step right. Uh, uh, no I have reached the summation I have reached this summation in 0 steps this summation this this term in one step and so on so forth right. So, for every uh, so uh, for if I it is possible for me to reach a state in one step right from starting from state s. Yes, if it is possible for me to reach a state in one step then I would I would uh, so for k equal to 1 those terms will appear here right. If it is possible for me to reach a state in two steps for k equal to 2 again that term will appear here and so on so forth. This is basically like rearranging it right. So, I can reach state x in one step in two steps in three steps in four steps. So, how many ever times I, how many ever steps I reach k x in so that many times this is going to appear in the summation here in, in this summation here right. So, that is basically how I have re rearranged the whole thing right and uh, and so this is this is our expression we are not quite there yet right. Uh, 
uh, but think of this probability right this is basically the probability of transitioning from state s which is the expression on my left hand side to the state x which is the expression on my right hand side in k steps when I am following policy pi right in k steps when I am following policy pi right. So, this summation here that we have will appear if you get there in one step it will appear once if you get there in two steps it will appear again three steps it will appear again and so on. So, so it is basically looking at uh, counting uh, the number of times uh, 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 you are going to get there right. So, now what we have to do remember is that we have to take the gradient of the performance metric which essentially is the gradient of v pi of s naught right. So, that means that uh, this expression instead of writing s here I will just write s naught here. So, that means I have to go from s naught to some state s in k steps. So, writing out that expression. So, this summation I am writing it as eta of s right the probability of going from s naught to s in k steps I am writing that summation as eta of s. So, that, that basically tells me ok it is a summation of the probabilities of reaching state s starting from s naught in any number of steps ok. Now, if I normalize this summation right if I if I if I kind of normalize this summation right as what we are doing here I am normalizing the summation by dividing by the sum over all eta s right. This basically tells me what is a fraction of times I will visit state s under policy pi right. So, eta f gives me the count across every step right every every number of steps how long uh, uh, how often do I visit this right. So, what what is the overall probability of me visiting state s taken over k steps right k equal 1 0 1 2 3 4 5. And now I divide by this divide this probability by other uh, uh, quantities so that I get a normalized count. So, that gives me the fraction of the time steps I will be in state s when I take a infinite ro rollout of my policy pi ok. So, having done that this so, so from here to here was just a substitution from here to here is just a normalization. So, I cannot arbitrarily divide by sum over uh, s prime eta s prime because it is not going to sum to 1 obviously right. So, I need to make sure I also have a I uh, will also have a sum over s prime in the numerator right. So, that I have done notice that once I normalize this and make this mu s right the fraction of time something is going to spend here. So, this guy really kind of uh, you know is, is a separate uh, quantity right. So, I then kind of roll this away into some kind of a constant of proportionality for this particular policy pi and I can write this whole thing as the gradient of j theta is some um, fraction of the times I spend in state s under policy pi that is given by this expression times this gradient a little, little involved right. But one thing you have to remember is this mu now has become a probability distribution right. So, I can actually sample according to mu right. So, I can take expectation according to mu of this expression right, which is something that we can do. Uh, just to state the policy gradient theorem again. So, uh, so, you can go over the proof slowly and you can actually follow it on the uh, uh, in the book as well. Uh, the, the gradient of the policy uh, performance with respect to theta is proportional to summation over s mu of s which is basically the fraction of times. Uh, or the fraction of the time that you will find spend in state s yes, when you are following policy pi times summation over a q pi s a of gradient of pi of a given s yes, for that particular setting of the parameter theta.